Hey guys, I am Caleb Giddings from Taurus USA, and you are watching a special episode of Gun Day Brunch brought to you by Taurus USA, makers of reliable, affordable, uh, really super awesome firearms for the law-abiding citizen. If you're interested in learning more about Taurus USA's products, you can go to TaurusUSA.com. And if you would like to buy any of those fine products, go ahead and visit our friends at Guns.com because we make them, they sell them. Guns.com, they're awesome. So we're big fans of uh, Guns.com over here, obviously. I was actually just looking at Guns.com to see if they had the gun that we're going to talk about today on the web store and it hasn't updated yet, but that's okay, we'll get there in a bit. Now you may notice that there is no Jack and there is no Keith on today's episode and that's because uh, I gave Jack COVID at a SHOT Show and he's dying and Keith uh, is extremely busy so we just decided I would do this episode. Um, in all seriousness, Jack is on the mend. He's not actually dying, so don't be freak out at me about that. But he's getting better, and he's going to be better soon. But what I did want to do today was I wanted to do a walkthrough on one of the new product launches from Taurus USA at SHOT Show. And that is the Taurus 327 Defender Toro. Now, before we get into this, I do want to apologize for any background noise. I work from home. I'm recording this from home, and there's two small children in my house. So I will not have a uh, full peace and quiet here, unfortunately. But let's talk about this gun because I joked around at SHOT Show that this gun has so much of my DNA in it that I should be paying it child support. And that's, that's pretty close to true, but... This gun actually was already in development when I started at Taurus. This had been a special project that had been asked for because people really like the 327 round. And out of a three inch all steel gun, all of a sudden, all of that heinous muzzle blast that you get off of the 327 suddenly becomes a little bit less heinous. Now, I came on board and I was like, hey, why don't we make it optics ready? Because everything should be optics ready. It's 2024. And that was pretty much it. So let's talk about this gun and what makes it interesting to me and what should make it interesting to you as a shooter. And we'll start with the grips. So if you're watching the video version of this, you can see that this has the Hogue three finger grip on it, which I of course have wrapped in goon tape because this is one of my personal guns that I actually have carried as, used as a carry gun for a couple of months now. So you can see that this one's wrapped in the goon tape, the three finger grip, giving you a full three finger grip. What that does for you is, again, you can get a full firing grip on it. The other Toro revolvers do not have this full-length grip. They have the shorter concealed carry grip that we normally ship on two-inch guns. I think this is a significant upgrade. This is the same grip that I put on my other Toro revolvers. So it made a lot of sense to just include this from the rip on this gun. The next feature that we have that I really, really like is the bobbed hammer. I know that I'm going to say this, and someone's going to be like, but didn't you just launch a 605 executive grade with a hammer spur? Yeah, we did. It, people want it, okay? People can be wrong about stuff, and people who want hammer spurs on their defensive revolvers are wrong about stuff. They just are. I can't help that those people, that those sell better than Bob Hammer Guns. That's not my fault. I'm out here trying to do the work of our Lord God and get people to stop buying hammer spurs on their defensive revolvers. But I am pushing a rock uphill out of the valley, okay? It's not, you know, not everyone's going to get the message. But I think that every defensive revolver, any fighting revolver, should have bobbed hammer. And this one has a bobbed hammer, and that makes it awesome. Now, moving on, it is, in fact, a six-shot 327. And let me address some of the commentary that I heard about this at SHOT Show, the most notable of which is, why isn't it a seven-shot? Uh, it's not a seven shot because of science. What do I mean when I say because of science? What I mean is, is that the cylinder window, or the, excuse me, the width of the cylinder on this gun is the same width as the J frame cylinder that holds six shots of 32 Magnum. Okay. To get six shots to, to get it to fit that width, we can only get six shots in there because if we tried to shoehorn a seventh shot, there's not enough cylinder material to physically fit seven shots into a package that wide. Now, if this was a true medium frame, like 
the Taurus 82 or the or the the Tracker or the 66 or any of those guns, we could have gotten six maybe even, or we could have gotten seven or maybe even eight rounds into it, but it's not a medium frame. It is a small frame. Just because the 856 Defender uses K-frame powder and speed, lo speed loaders does not make this gun a medium frame. It is a small frame much more in closer, much more in size to the Colt D frame than it is a medium frame revolver. So she's a small frame, says so on the website, small frame. That's why we only got six rounds of 327 Fed Mag in there. Because I can't get seven. If I could, believe me, if I could get seven rounds in this package, I would, but I can't. Science says, no, sir. I don't want to turn this gun into a hand grenade. So it is a six shot 327 Fed Mag. Um, what do I like about 327 Fed Mag? Honestly, not much, but you know what I do like? I really like 32 Magnum, and I really like 32 Long, and I really like the Buffalo 32 Long Wad Cutter because that round slaps. So with the Buffalo Bore 32 Long Wad Cutter, which is a 100 grain lead wad cutter, I had this gun or the other one that I've got because I have two. One's got a shield sight. One has this primary arms MRDS. I had a B8 at seven yards and I had the gun in a you know compressed ready position and I got my timer out and I gave myself a little shooter ready stand by hit the timer random it goes beep drive the gun into my eye line and work the trigger as fast as I can pull it which is about maybe a little bit faster than that I don't know if you could hear those clicks if my mic picked them up or not but when I looked at the timer the timer said that none of my splits were longer than 0 0.25 seconds and then when I looked at the target all six hits were in the 10 ring of the B8 at seven yards. And I can tell you from watching the target and tracking the dot, the dot didn't even lift out of the window while I was ripping these rounds out. It. So it goes hard, it's easy to shoot, and it's awesome. And I did actually just buy some uh, 327 Fed Mag ammo because I do want to kind of get an idea for the difference in muzzle blast and stuff on a heavier gun versus the 32 mags, which are, of course, again, my favorite of favorites. Moving on, the gun is optics ready. We talked about that, optics ready. So it is the Shield RMSC footprint, and I have two different dots. I have this primary arms dot on one of my guns, and I have a Shield RMSC on the other gun. The gun comes in the box with enough uh, mounting hardware to do everything you need. So it comes with the plate, it comes with two screws to secure the plate to the top strap of the frame, and then it comes with four screws, two each of two different types, to secure your optic to the mounting plate. The reason why we have four screws is different optics have different deck heights, deck, D-E-C-K, deck heights, versus some other ones. So we wanna make sure that we're giving you the right optics to secure this gun to the, or secure the optic to the gun. Now. The last feature that we'll talk about on here is the three inch barrel, which is tipped off by this Ameriglow front sight. So we have a high contrast front sight, which means if you don't want to use the optic, which is up to you, it's America's free country. You could not use the optic if you want. If you don't want to use the optic, then you can just use the Ameriglow front sight. And you have a really nice high contrast front sight. And there are some use cases for that. You know, if you want to make the gun a little bit more discreet, it's a lot easier to carry without the optic on it. It fits into more holsters, that kind of stuff. So you have that as an option. I, of course, have gone for the optic on all of my guns uh, because it's 2024 and everything should have an optic on it. Again, uh, so far, I have fired 200-ish rounds through both of these guns. The... Uh, and they're fine, you know, I got I got some light primer strikes with some weird uh, Eastern European 32 long FMJ ammo, it was, I think it was Fiocchi. So, you know, that typically hard primered Fiocchi stuff uh, was, was a no-go in this gun, but everything else is just click, click, boom. You know, it's ripped off very easily. Let's talk real briefly about ammo selection because that's gonna be important to some people. So. Uh, 327 Fed Mag. If you want to carry it, there's some great loads out there that work really, really well. I personally would go with the Federal Hydroshock in 327 Fed Mag, and that's mostly because they don't make an HST in it. If they made an HST, I'd tell you to get that, but they don't, so use the Hydroshock. Uh, if you want to carry 327 Fed Mag. If you want to carry 32 Magnum, a round that I have personally tested in ballistic shell on multiple repeat occasions 
is the Federal 85 grain jacket at hollow point. That works really, really well. It defeats four layer denim. It penetrates 12 to 16 inches and you even get just the little little hair's breadth of expansion on it. So it takes your 32 round and turns it into like a 35, 36, 37 ish round. So, you know, you end up getting the same projectile diameter as a 38 special wad cutter. And we all know that 38 special wad cutters are awesome. So that is a cool thing. Uh, other types of ammo, again, I mentioned the Buffalo Boar 32 long wad cutters. That's really probably the only 32 long loads I would carry would be from Buffalo Boar, just because you're starting to get into really anemic muzzle velocities with 32 long, and I would be concerned about adequate penetration from those cartridges the same way that I get concerned about adequate penetration from a 22 long rifle. But Buffalo Boar is the exception to that. I would happily carry a Buffalo Boar cartridge and be perfectly comfortable with it. Um, other options out there. Someone's going to ask about it. Caleb, what about 32 ACP? Can you fire 32 ACP out of this gun? Technically, yes, it will go off. However, uh, since it's not a cartridge that we list, it will also technically void your warranty. So one, don't do it. But more importantly... Uh, the problem with, there's a couple problems with 32 ACP out of this gun. One, the 32 ACP projectile is a little bit undersized compared to your 32 Magnum projectile. Two, it has a massive, insane amount of freeboard that it needs to jump, like way more than a 327 Fed Mag or a 32 Magnum or even a 32 Long Round. It has a lot of freeboard that it's got to jump. So, in testing with other 327 guns that I've got, I have seen it keyhole or start to keyhole. It's not as accurate. It also usually won't hit point of aim to your sights, okay? If the gun's properly regulated for 327 or 32 mag, 32 ACP will not hit anywhere near the sights, but it will technically go bang. The other problem is, is that the 32 ACP is semi-rimmed, and it doesn't have a full rim like our beautiful 32 Magnum here. And if you fire six rounds of 32 ACP out of this gun, and then you go and you vigorously operate the ejector rod, you might get a rim override from the ejector star because the star on this gun isn't designed to knock out 32 ACP casings. It's designed to knock out 32 Magnum, 327 Fed Mag, 32 Longs, right? 32 Shorts even, but not 32 ACP. So 32 ACP is one of those one of those things where you can, but I wouldn't. Doesn't it's it, especially I get it. There's a lot of cheap 32 out there. It's certainly a lot cheaper than 32 Magnum, but it's not really the juice. The juice ain't worth the squeeze, as they say. I'd stick to my 32 Mags and 32 Longs out of this gun. Uh, but that is a drawback to it, is that 32 Magnum ammo is expensive, and it's not always easy to find. I heard a rumor that Federal is going to come out with a 32 Mag FMJ on their Federal Champion line, so hopefully that'll drop soon, because everybody's throwing 32s out there at the world right now. We've got one. Uh, Smith & Wesson's got a cool one through Lipsy's. Uh, yeah. Which brings me to the last question that I know someone's going to ask. Someone is going to say, hey, Caleb, why should I buy the Taurus 327 Defender Toro instead of the new Lipsy's J-Frame 32 Magnum? And here's the number one reason. Uh, because this has a red dot, and red dots are cool. In all seriousness, in all seriousness though, the new that new J-Frame is pretty tight. Like, I work for Taurus USA, and I'm not going to be a hater because that gun is cool. Uh, it's very, very cool. It's squared away. And if you're looking for more of a pocket gun versus a belt gun, get that one. If you're looking for a belt gun, something that you want to carry in a holster, uh, get this one. Or better yet, this is America. Buy them both. Get the 327 Defender Toro and carry it in a holster. Get the 32 Mag, carry it in an ankle holster. 32 is the best. It's the year of the 32. Everyone was saying it's the year of the lever action. It's shot. It's not. It's the year of the 32. Let's go. 32, boys. Come on. We're making it happen. We're doing it. We're doing the damn thing. Um, holster options. Without the red dot sight, this will fit any holster that is made for a Taurus 856. 
with a red dot installed, you're gonna to need to get one of the red dot options. I personally go with the Filster City Special. There is also a model from Galco that supports this and they literally made it for us. And I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head. But if you like, it's on our website at shoptaurus.com and it's also on Galco's website. So go get one of those. That one's a traditional uh, behind the waist. It's like a summer comfort, but with a shroud for the optic, it's pretty tight. Uh, and then there's a super minimalist holster that Mission First Tactical makes that'll also work with it. But that one doesn't like cover the barrel. It just like covers the trigger guard. So yeah, those are your options. That is a 15 minute rundown on the 327 Defender Toro. I like this gun. I have design input on this gun. I work for the company that makes this gun. So, you know, take my, you know, but here's the thing, right? People who've been following me for a while also know that I'm not gonna recommend a gun that I haven't shot. And I have shot these and I've shot a decent amount of rounds through them and they're reliable, they're tough. You know, I'm gonna get, I'm getting, I'm fixing to go on a road trip here pretty soon. That's the gun I'm taking with me. I'm taking that, I'm taking a reload and that's it. So yeah, if you have any more questions, visit us on taurususa.com. And again, if you're looking to buy one, go to guns.com.